Hello, my fellow internet degenerates. We're gathered here today to talk about anime. Is it good? Is it bad? Will my art teacher be disappointed if I'm caught drawing it during class? The answer to all of the above is both yes and no. Is that confusing? Well, maybe if you watch the rest of the video, I'll have the chance to elaborate. Have a little patience, why don't you? Similar to my last time lapse vid, this is going to be half scripted, half not, because I already know I don't have enough written down to cover the entire runtime. FYI, the drawings you'll be seeing throughout are my copies of manga panels from Chainsaw Man, as well as manga cover art from Naruto, since I find the poses on the covers to be more dynamic and interesting to look at. Enjoy! Art school professors outright rejecting application portfolios containing anime has been a topic of contention within the art community for some time now, and as much as I have some strong opinions about art school, I have to side with the professors on this one. The reason most professors reviewing portfolios don't like seeing anime or manga in them is because more often than not, the applicant is using anime as a crutch to hide the fact that they don't know their fundamentals very well. It's natural to want to emulate the things you're most inspired by. If it's not obvious enough already, I myself am very influenced by anime, but that shouldn't be the only thing you're studying. I think it was in one of my perspective videos that I compared learning your fundamentals to eating your vegetables which applies to this topic as well. And if you don't have a good grasp of drawing fundamentals, I have a playlist that covers everything you need to know in half an hour. Wow, how convenient is that? I'm gonna keep plugging it, because I put a lot of work into those videos. Anime can still be studied, but you have to do the work to break it down in order to really improve. And you won't be able to do that without an understanding of how forms look in 3D space, or how different parts of the body fit together. As the name suggests, studying realism will give you an understanding of what things actually look like in reality, while things like anime will help you stylize it. I have an older video on style, by the way, where I talk about that in more detail. But it comes down to balance, right? Too much realism isn't going to be all that interesting, while too much stylization without the realism as the foundation is just going to fall apart. It's not going to look convincing. Like a lot of current artists, I started out copying things like Pokemon, as well as screenshots of my favorite anime which did help me develop an eye for proportion and develop line confidence, but that's all I was doing, was copying, which wasn't helping me to create my own work because those other fundamentals were missing. So I had my anime phase before dedicating a few years to drawing real things from life and doing observational studies, until I eventually went back to copying anime, as well as other artists I admire, but with a newfound sense of why I was doing it. If anime is what excites you enough to actually sit down and draw, that's great. Just keep in mind that there is such a thing as good and bad reference. The proportions and structure found in some anime designs are going to be of better quality than others. Frankly, there's some anime out there that I hate looking at. I personally prefer the visuals of anime from the 90s more than some modern anime because the drawings tend to have more structure to them compared to the more streamlined style we see more of today. This isn't a bad thing, of course, since simple is always better when it comes to animation. It saves time and effort. But I think some things get lost in translation when trying to study animation frames because of how clean the end result is. 
Which is why, if you are going to practice drawing anime, I'd say you're better off studying manga or even concept art for anime productions. With all of that said, if an art professor ever tells you that drawing anime is a waste of time, then it means they don't know what they're talking about and likely haven't worked in any part of the entertainment industry over the past 10 years. Because anime is everywhere now. Pacific Rim is clearly inspired by anime like Gundam and Evangelion. Spider-Verse pays homage to anime with Penny Parker's character. I can even remember there being discussion about how some shots from Inception were almost identical to those from Satoshi Kon's Paprika. For better or for worse, a lot of anime have been getting live-action adaptions, so there's clearly a large audience for it here in the West. Back in the pre-2010 era, the most anime you'd see as a kid that wasn't Pokemon was the occasional episode of Naruto or Dragon Ball Z on your local youth network after 9pm. And you'd have to watch episodes at random because you were too young to understand the archaic system of TV guides. That was until streaming services forever changed the landscape of digital media. Anime is so mainstream now it has its own category on Netflix, so we've come a long way. When I was in high school, if I told anyone I was in the anime club, I probably would have gotten body checked in the hallway. But now it's considered cool. It's a lot like D&D that way. In the 80s, D&D was purely a nerdy subculture, but now everyone plays it. And now, we anime nerds can all wear our cat ears in public without shame, just as God intended. The reason I only do copies for these commentary videos is because it's a lot less draining than trying to draw things from imagination, which means I'm a lot more willing to do it for like three hours straight. It doesn't require as much mental effort because the original artist has already done a lot of the work for you. Otherwise, you need to be the one to decide on the reference you'll be using, the design, the pose, the expression. But that's also why you shouldn't rely on it too much. It's like taking a test with some of the answers filled in, or designing something using presets. You still need knowledge and mileage in order to do it well, but you don't need to bust out all the tools in your arsenal, so to speak. And yet, you can still see a bit of my own style coming through in the way I draw other people's drawings because I'm consciously choosing which lines are the most important to me and which ones to leave out. Uh, how much more time do I need to kill? Three minutes? Well, to go back to my take on 90s anime, maybe structure isn't the right word as to why I like it. I think it had a lot more weight to it. I don't know, I find a lot of modern anime to be very smooth looking, whereas stuff from the 90s kind of had a grittiness to it. I think the other reason is color palettes. A lot of modern anime have very saturated palettes, which I'm not a fan of. I really prefer more subtle, desaturated colors. It's easier on the eyes. Like, okay, in the case of Hunter x Hunter, the animation quality is definitely better in the remake. I just wish the colors were toned down more, like in the original. And when a show came out isn't always going to be an indicator of quality. Like, I'm pretty sure the Akira movie came out in the 80s, and it looks phenomenal, because it had a large budget, I'm sure. And some animators probably died making it. And there's some modern anime that look terrible because they just get churned out because of tight deadlines, time constraints, less resources, that sort of thing. I will say the one thing that's definitely improved since the 90s are English dubs. Because the voice acting is an actual industry now, instead of just hiring someone off the street for like $20. Hey, can you record a few lines for us? Yeah, sure. Should I do another take of that? Or No, no, it's fine. We'll just leave it in. We've got... We've got like six other projects to dub. It's fine. 
If you have a keen enough eye, you may have noticed that I have a habit of abusing the lasso tool for the sake of nudging things over slightly, wherever needed. I am a little over-reliant on it, same with the undo tool, but that's what happens when you've been drawing digitally for years. And I'm overlapping things a bit in order to actually fit everything on the canvas. You know, Naruto was really cool as a kid. It was like Saturday morning cartoons on steroids. It looked kind of like Pokemon, but it had blood and boobs in it. It doesn't get much better than that as a 12-year-old. Maybe a bit mind-numbing as an adult, but I have a lot of nostalgia for it. Thanks for watching, draw whatever the hell you want, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.